On Christmas Eve 2018, about 3,000 residents at the 36-storey Opal Tower apartment complex in Western Sydney were evacuated after cracks were found in the foundations. Hundreds of residents have been in temporary accommodation for more than seven months while repairs are still being completed. Due to a drop in value of their apartments and a loss in rental income, the owners are seeking millions of dollars in compensation in a recently filed class action lawsuit. The lawsuit claims a breach of warranty and that the tower was not designed or constructed with due care and skill. Some of the apartments in the building cost up to $2.5 million. Larger apartments were renting out for more than $750 per week. The owners, understandably, are furious. How could a building that costs so much money be of such poor quality? Just last month in June, residents were forced to evacuate the 10-storey mascot towers in the inner south of Sydney due to rapid deterioration of cracks within a primary support beam. Under New South Wales law, building defects are covered under warranty for six years after completion of development. The mascot towers is 10 years old, so unfortunately, the owners of the units have to foot the expensive repair bill themselves. Stephen Goddard, spokesperson for the Owners Corporation Network and a Strata lawyer himself, spoke of the legal issues facing owners of apartments in these towers. He said, Consumers have nowhere to go in these sorts of situations. There's nobody for them to sue. There's nowhere for them to turn. People have more consumer protection buying a fridge than a million dollar apartment. Anybody looking to purchase in a building less than 10 years of age is foolish because the defects will not have yet surfaced. Don't buy anything less than 10 years old. You should never buy off the plan. It's unsafe to do so. Michael Zylus, principal real estate agent at MGM Properties, has one of the one-bedroom units in Mascot Towers on the market for $740,000. He said, Obviously, I don't think anybody will be in a position to commit to buying a property with a building that's got problems. It's very damaging for the vendor who is counting on selling this property. Mr. Goddard also spoke of the ongoing implications for owners. He said, The building will become toxic, just like Opal, where you won't be able to sell out of it because people know of the structural defects. For many years, ever-increasing property prices have wallpapered over the issue. We're now seeing owners confronted with the possibility that their investment may be lower than their outstanding mortgage. Speaking about other toxic apartments in Sydney, owners of the Sugar Cube apartment development in the inner city suburb of Erskineville were refused access to their apartments due to concerns over toxic land underneath it. Nick Rieck, one of the owners, bought his apartment for $1 million last year, but has yet to live in it. He said, I have no rights. I have nothing. I'm not allowed to stay here. We have no power. They took the money. A spokesperson for the City of Sydney spoke of the concerns. They said, Several conditions require remediation including contaminated groundwater and detection of heavy metals, hydrocarbons and asbestos. The contaminants are believed to be associated with the former industrial use of the site involving manufacturing activities. City staff have been in ongoing discussions with the developer, Golden Rain Development, who has not complied with the development consent conditions concerning remediation of the site. But yet another apartment block was evacuated in Sydney late last year in the inner eastern suburb of Zetland. It was evacuated due to extensive water damage and subsequent faults within the fire alarm system. It has now been empty for over eight months. Brisbane apartment towers have also been in the news. Dr. Louisa Carter purchased a new four-bedroom sub-penthouse in the Johnson apartment tower in inner city Brisbane back in 2017. Just days after moving in, the roof began leaking, forcing her family to move out. She said, in the first big storm, suddenly there was water pouring into the main bedroom. This is a state heritage listed property. It's meant to be kept for future generations. We've got a colander for a roof pouring down through the concrete. Dr. Carter has made a number of complaints through various channels. She first raised issues with the developer and the body corporate. She then complained to the Queensland's Building and Construction Commission QBCC, who in turn demanded that the developer, Maxcon, fix the leak. Some works were carried out, but the body corporate's insurance company found that there were still defects within the building. Dr. Carter said she has lost thousands of dollars after having to rent another property. She said, We're in limbo. We're caught in a stalemate between parties. I feel like collateral damage in a financial equation and it's just not good enough. It's my home. My issue is, as an individual unit owner, I don't have any control over the common lot, the roof, so I'm caught. Of course, there are many other stories about apartment tower defects throughout Australia, but there are just too many to list here. Surely these published articles are just the tip of a very big iceberg. After reading the articles for myself, my only piece of advice is this. Don't buy a new apartment, especially if it's over three stories high. 
In most states, home warranty insurance is not a requirement, or even available, for new apartments over three storeys high. If you're going to buy an apartment, buy a smaller, simpler one in a walk-up building. Too many things have been going wrong with these big buildings of late. Unfortunately, while chasing the Australian dream, many of these residents have found themselves in the midst of an Australian nightmare.